So we have a, a lovely blend of uh, two projects, two big copper projects, one in Finland in the snow, and the other is in Australia in, uh, in the desert near Mount Isa in northeastern Australia. The projects are different. The Finnish project is in development, so there's an underground mine happening and uh, refurbishment of a processing plant is underway. And we hit the first uh, ore in the decline, the decline tunnel in Finland in uh, October, November. So we'll actually be in production October, November. Whereas in uh, Australia, it's a much bigger project. It's one of the largest uh, copper projects in, uh, in Australia, nearly a million tonnes of copper metal and resources. And there we are uh, drilling and undertaking a feasibility study to try and prepare for financing and a decision to build the project in uh, probably the middle of next year. We just raised 70 million Australian dollars with a fully underwritten raising by Credit Suisse. And um, it was wonderful getting a house of that quality to back a junior. And they've brought in probably the, uh, all the top institutional investors in mining in Australia. We're in the process of negotiating a $20 million loan facility from Credit Suisse. So the house is really getting behind the stock. And a banking process is something that really gives, should give investors confidence because banks don't give you money without asking a few questions. And uh, this has been a, a long process with a lot of technical due diligence, financial due diligence, because all the bank cares about is getting paid back. So if a project goes through a banking process, it should give shareholders some confidence that it is actually real. we actually started drilling in Queensland. First step is a 25 kilometer uh, reverse circulation drilling program, mainly shallow drilling of 100 to maximum 300 meters. That's quite a lot, but we'll probably ultimately drill some 35 kilometers, 40 kilometers of, of drilling. And what we're hoping to do there is to take this resource from already something very large to uh, perhaps 50% larger than it is today. Some people may have heard that a lot of floods in uh, Queensland this year, some terrible things happened. It's a tropical climate and for many months of the year you can't work. You take a drill rig out in the bush when it's, uh, you get half a metre of rain a day, then it just sinks into the mud. There's an enormous pressure to get work done in this gap between uh, now and when the rains probably start in uh, November. So very busy and uh, everyone's running around in Queensland like, uh, like crazy people uh, to try and get the work done. So hopefully we don't have the same rain again this year. Copper is in everything. It's in, the, uh, it's in the video camera here and all the wiring, it's in these lights. But what's been driving copper demand is China power stations, infrastructure, electrical reticulation, all that sort of thing. So Chinese infrastructure has been driving copper demand. With copper, the problem is geology. We just don't have the copper deposits that we used to. The big copper deposits are getting old, the grades are declining, the costs are going up, and we don't have the copper to replace them. If you can get a mine into production today, you'll make, you'll make a very serious profit. We first started promoting in Germany maybe a year, year and a half ago, and the things that we said we'd do, we've done. We've delivered feasibility studies, we've delivered engineering, we've delivered drill programs, we've delivered resource upgrades, we've delivered financing. So I think before you look to the future, you must look at the past and track records. Mining and processing is simple. You smash a rock up into tiny little pieces and try and extract the bit that's worth money and throw away the bit that's not. The technique we use, flotation, depends on the surface chemistry of the particles that are worth money. Essentially, you treat the surface of the little tiny particles and the ones that are worth money, you blow air through a tank of, filled with water and mud, and the, uh, the ones with the funny surface properties float to the top. They cling to the bubbles and float at the top, and then you remove them. And the ones that aren't worth money sink to the bottom, and that's simply how you separate them. But then it gets 
it's obviously relatively sophisticated. So I think you know, we often in the industry we talk a lot about the geological technologies and they're lots of fun, but uh, to turn something into a practical opportunity to make money, mining and processing are just as important. I think one of the things that you have to acknowledge, a mine is not a sustainable activity. You change the landscape forever if you dig a hole. If it's an underground mine, it's a relatively small amount of disturbance. If it's an open pit mine, then there's a new big hole in the ground and all the rock you move becomes a new hill. So it does have an impact. The materials we mine now are not worth so much money that it can support putting everything back. So what you must do then is you, uh, you try and make that disturbance in a way such that you can return ecosystems as close as possible back to what they were and also minimise any pollution. If you are in a, uh, an environment where there's a lot of rain, such as uh, Mount Isa, where you can have half a metre in a day of rain, you have to be very careful that none of these materials escape into the environment or into drainages. Like everything in life, it's about planning. The other thing about good environmental practice is you, you start rehabilitating your mine and getting it ready for it to abandon on the first day you start mining. It's got to be the mindset of being ready, and it's not money thrown away. It's an investment, because if you're a successful miner and you don't do anything to upset community or government, then you'll be able to mine the next one. So it's a sensible thing to do. Plus, you find that a lot of people in the mining industry are people who spend half their life out in remote places and they genuinely love uh, those kind of places and they don't want to make a mess. <laughs>